So when it is just vertical, it means it's slowing down? Well, yeah, so what happened here, right? This person was moving at one meter per second for a second. And then all of a sudden, they turned around and went one meter per second for the next second. So they walked this way, and then they walked straight back. Okay. So that acceleration took place super quick. Right? But we know that the slope of this graph is what? What does the slope of a velocity versus time graph tell us? Yeah, right? Wait, you say that one more time? The slope of a velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. Because it's your change in velocity or your change in time. But here we're not asked about acceleration. We're asked about the position. Where are they? So let's think about it the other way. If I find the area of this box right here, what does this area tell me? It's going to take, tell me a length, yeah. And specifically a displacement. Yeah, the displacement. So I want one meter per second for one second. How far away from my origin am I? One meter, right? One times one will give me the area. It will also give me one meter per second times a second would give me one meter. But then look at this. It continues in the opposite direction, going one meter per second for one second. What's the area of that curve? One meter. One meter. It'd be one meter, but a negative one meter. Right? So positive one meter and a negative one meter, where are they? Right, back to their original position. Now this one, I can't do. I don't know the equation for this. But I do know that this person is not back where they started from. They moved in the positive direction and they never looked back. So that one right there, it's like they went somewhere and they came right back. Yeah. Um, so, which object is, is farthest from the origin? C. C. Yeah. Object B. Okay. This is, you've got you've to gotta really pay attention to the word. Which object moves with constant, non-zero acceleration? B. Do you guys all agree that B? No. Why, why not, Jamie? Right. See, it does have a non-zero acceleration, but you can see the slope of this keeps changing. And you guys told me that the slope of the velocity versus time graph is your acceleration. So would it be neither? Neither. Yeah. What would constant acceleration, constant non-zero acceleration look like? Yeah. Right. It'd be it'd look like this, an angle. Uh, straight down. Okay. okay. All right. And we already answered question three. Wait. Okay. So it's B B D A. I'm sorry. B D B. B. Wait. No. B D A. Oh, B D A. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like everything. I just leave. Yeah. Everything on that with the Y. Um, so for number five, right? Um, it should have been C. Can you explain that? No. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm in a strange mood. I had to get up an extra half hour early, and that just is kind of. I had to get up two hours early. So, uh, by moving up this positive direction, the origin. Hold on, I'm about to say. Alright, first of all, first of all, we should be able to eliminate a couple answers right off the bat. Which answers should we eliminate? The positive. The positive one. Yeah, the positives, right? He was only moving in the positive direction for one second. Okay. And then for the next ten seconds, he's moving in the negative direction. Or, yeah, the body, okay? The body's moving in the negative direction. Right? Um, so, that'll 
right away tip us up as one of those two. Well, how, how far does he move originally in that first second? 24 meters, nice. Yeah, right? Going 24 meters per second in one second, he's got to be 24 meters away, right? So at t equals 1, he's at his, positive, his position is 24 meters. And now for the next 10 seconds, he's, he's got a negative acceleration. So let's, let's check him out. Um, his position, again, we'll go back to... Wait, this one finish the rest of the question and say, because man is like missing something. Oh, okay. Um, the body, at, at one second, so after that, after he went 24 meters, the body's given a constant acceleration of 6 meters per second squared in the negative direction. And we want to know the position of his body at the end of that, at the end of... Uh, at, 11, at the 11 second mark. Okay. So he's already, we're already at the one second mark. We're trying to figure out where he is after 10 more seconds go by. So can you do like a, a proportion kind of thing? Um, well, you're really going to have to focus in on, on this equation here for constant acceleration. Um, we've got the original position plus our original speed times time plus our, uh, our acceleration times the square of time. And when you substitute, right, make sure this is negative 6. Right? Now he's only accelerating for 10 seconds. So you're going to want to put 10 in here for sec uh, 10 seconds in here and 10 seconds in here. Alright, so you're going to say x equals Probably the difference between these is they're anticipating people putting in 11 seconds for time. Okay. Yeah. So wait, what can I for B not and X? Well, um, that's a good question. Since we're talking about, and see, this is this is where the conceptual understanding has to be, right? Um, the X not is is your 24 meters. Because what we're looking at is the beginning of our 10-second um, interval, which starts at the end of that first second. And at the end of that first second, we were already in 24 meters. Okay. okay. And what's the V-naught? What is V-naught, guys? Mm -hmm. 24. Is it 0 or is it 24? Right. He was moving 24 meters per second before he started accelerating. You want to be 24 then? Yeah. Had me the right number. I will give me the error. Uh, half of six, half of negative six would be negative three. Ten squared would be a hundred. Oh yeah, I forgot you got a square. Um, a uh, formula sheet with you, the same one that you've been studying with, um, and and that's the one you'll have on the actual exam. Okay, um, so I want you to get in the habit of um, looking to that when you're confused about a variable. How long is it? Uh, again, it's 25 questions. Um, that's tomorrow. Oh no, that's Friday, fourth period, and the Friday fifth period is a free response um, test. Like, what's free response? It's an essay. Well, I'm so glad you asked. Okay. Or it's just a open-ended math problem. Yeah, like, they might give you something like this. Look, look at uh, page 26. It has 26 at the bottom. Yeah. Let's 
look at this guy right here. What page is that? Um, that is 23 at the bottom. Um, I don't have the package. You don't have the package? Oh there, we got one of the blue. Yeah, a furry paw on the back there. Oh dear. Just focus on because this is a this is taken from an old APB exam, which is um, less conceptual base. I want you to just focus on drawing the two graphs. And that's all we're going to do with this one. Draw the two graphs and the, the velocity versus time graph for both the horizontal and the vertical um, dimensions. Let's try to figure out what's happening here. What's like the first thing you gotta do with this problem? Draw a picture. Huh? <laughs> uh, crawl up in the fetal position, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good start. It's really not like that. That's accurate. So, I know when I kick the ball at this angle, I give it some horizontal velocity and I give it some vertical velocity. And I can figure out exactly how much, right, by using my sine and cosine functions. So this is, by the way, this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle again. Um, this is 12 meters per second. And this is um, 16 meters per second. Um, so if I take 20 times the sine of 60, or sine of 37, that's 20 times 0.6, that's 12. If I take uh, 20 times the cosine of 37, that's 20 times 0.8, which is 16. Okay. Now, guys, the difference between this test question and how they would modify it for AP Physics 1 would be they would ask you to describe how the ball is moving horizontally through the air. Um, and what would you tell them? How, does it, how do projectiles move in the horizontal direction? That? It stays the same. Why? Why don't they speed up or slow down sideways? Yeah, gravity's going down, but it's not pulling sideways. It's yeah, constant, too. So look, we know that it starts out with 60 meters per second in velocity at the beginning. That means it's going to be going 16 meters per second the entire time it's in flight. Yeah. This is my life, Michelle. This is my life. That's a good question. So we could we could look at that. Um, in fact, it won't be. Yeah, it's only two seconds there. That's right. Now, how did see? This is good. This is good. Uh, how did you know it was only about two seconds? It was in the air. Because it's thirty-two meters across. It should be at sixteen meters per second. Okay, yeah, right. It would it would get to this point in two seconds at 16 meters per second. Yeah. So it would hit the, the bottom of the tenth fence. Not true. Somewhere. Potentially, maybe it would go yeah, over. I don't know. Someone so would either get to the fence or get against. How did you even label it 12 or 16? How did you know it was after 12 or 16? So this is the angle. This is the opposite side. That's um, and this is the hypotenuse. The sine function talks about the relationship between the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So if I take the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle, I'll get that. Wait, if you take the what? The hypotenuse, the 20 meters per second. And I multiply it by the sine of this angle, I'll get the opposite side. If I take the hypotenuse times the cosine, I'll get the adjacent side. Okay, great. I also knew, by the way, that it wasn't in the air for a um, whole four seconds because look at the initial velocities. How long is it going to take to reach the apex? Okay, check it out. We know that the acceleration due to gravity is about 10 meters per second squared. So, well, first of all, let's look at our graph and we'll come back to that. We started out at 12, correct? In the, in the vertical direction, we started out going 12. 
After a second, how fast am I going? Or how fast is the projectile moving in the vertical direction? You guys don't know this because listen, you told me the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. That means it changes by 10 meters per second every second. So if it's going 12 now, a second later, how fast is it going to be going? Two. Right? Because it's on its way down. Right? It's losing speed on the way up, rather. Sorry. All right. So a second later, how fast is it going? Yes. Good. Negative eight. About negative eight. Yeah. It changes. That changes everything because it's dropping. So look, the uh, draw a line through that, right? The slope of that line is negative ten. Right? Negative ten meters per second squared. Now let's go back to that original question. How did we know that it was not going to be in the air for much longer than two seconds? That's one of them. That's one of the reasons. But in the vertical direction, look. I know it's going to run out of speed in 1.2 seconds, right? If it were up at 10 meters per second, it would have lost all its speed in one second. So I know it's going to go up for about 1.2 seconds, and it's going to come down for about 1.2 seconds. So yeah, it is going to be definite. And you guys are right, it would not be in the air the entire uh, four seconds. Okay, cool. So this is the, an idea where you, you definitely have to know the concepts and be, then be able to apply them. And not only, only be able to apply them, but to explain them. Projectiles boil down to three things. Constant horizontal velocity, constant vertical acceleration. Those things happen independently. This is crazy. I imagine so, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, let's go back to the homework problem. Unless anybody had a question about this? Yeah, this is like a free response. Um, if you look at these three responses, there's, there's a lot of calculations. On your test, there won't be as many calculations and more explaining things. Yeah. So, how do you, for the question you just did, how do you do the other stuff? Like the graph determine the time it takes to get the ball to reach the all right. So for A, determine the time it takes. We know it's moving 16 meters per second. 32 meters to get to the fence. So that's going to take 32 divided by 16. Oh, okay. So you use the horizontal When you use the vertical. When you're trying to figure out the vertical location. Right? So the, the fence is a certain horizontal distance. If we wanted to answer question B, guys, and this is not please, if we wanted to answer question B, will the ball hit the fence? We've already discussed that it will. How far below the top of the fence will it hit? How, how can we figure that out? Okay. We have to know. They ask you the questions in this order because you're going to need A to do B. How long is it going to take to hit the fence? Two seconds. Two seconds, right? Because the fence is 32 meters away. <laughs> and uh, it's moving at 16 meters per second in that direction. But yeah, it even equals two. Okay. So two seconds to hit the um, to hit the fence. We want to know. How high is it going to be off the ground after two seconds? Yeah. You can use this in the vertical direction. You could even use this in the vertical direction, and then you'd have to calculate how fast it's moving vertically, which wouldn't be that hard. Um, but either one will, will get you, you can solve for a vertical position, and then um, you want to be careful to word it. This will give you how high off the ground. They didn't ask how high off the ground. They'll say, they said how far below the top of the fence. So make sure you read everything really carefully. The answer you get isn't going to be very good.
this answer. Um, let's focus um, on, on more of the uh, choice now. I mean, unless you guys want to do it. The floor is easy. Tell me what you want. Not 